Let's talk about the hero's journey for Raymond's run by Tony Cade Bambara today. I want to be a hero. I need a hero. If you are new to the Codex Cantina, we take some of the most important literature that has influenced even today's writers. If you're down for a conversational approach to literature, hit that subscribe button to join us. And as always, to start off with publication information, Raymond's Run was published in 1990. We'll leave a link down in the description where you can listen for free. Now, Tony Cade Bambara grew up in New York City, and she writes what she knows many of her stories take place in her hometown of Harlem. And why that's important is we'll see lots of dialect and usage of words from New York City. Now, why I want to break this down in terms of the hero's journey is sometimes it's good to give students kind of like that look into a more modern piece. And sometimes it's good to step out of the fantasy realm for that too. Because for those of you that aren't familiar with the hero's journey, there's a couple different variations. There can be eight steps, there can be 12 steps. Most of them agree though. We start out with a hero with either a flaw or or something that's missing in their life. And sometimes they're tragically misunderstood by those around them, or maybe they don't even understand themselves. And what happens is the hero is granted a quest of some sort, a chance to go out and achieve something. And there's typically a villain that opposes them. They have to leave their comfort zone and go out into this external world, conquer their their fears or conquer the villain to come back and find that they've learned something about themselves, that they've changed or achieved or come back with a trophy of sorts. And sometimes there's like an epiphany too for how they realize these things too. And I think we see a lot of these within the story, within the streets of Harlem, New York, that I think is super approachable for young students today. So now we'll go ahead and move into our plot, do a quick recap, and then get into analysis. So we follow Squeaky, a young girl whose sole responsibility is her brother Raymond, who's younger but bigger and has some form of a mental disability. Squeaky ferociously will stand up for her brother, defending him against insults. She has earned herself a reputation for that, as well as running, and nobody runs faster than Squeaky, except her father. Now, at school, a girl named Gretchen begins talking how she's going to beat Squeaky in the upcoming May Day race, an annual event for the community. Now, Squeaky begins training. Her brother kind of tags along, maybe even embarrassing her just slightly, but as long as he stays out of her way during training. Until one day, she spots Gretchen, Mary Louise, and Rosie coming down the street. And the girls become slightly mean, antagonizing Raymond, where she stands up for her brother. In their, in, in their faces. Now, on race day, a teacher offers a suggestion that she throw the race so that the other girls could win because Squeaky wins every year. They line up for the race, and she has a quick daydream, thinking about being floating away, but not in the it sort of way. <laughs> now, she snaps back to run the race, and she sees how hard Gretchen ran, and the audio kind of cuts out as they announce the winner, and the teachers argue over their stopwatch times, but she, as she was running, she had seen her brother running along with her. And now Squeaky suddenly doesn't care about the results. She decides she'll train her brother Raymond instead. That's her next goal. And she jumps up and down in excitement to train Raymond, even though... She has declared the race winner. That's not why, why she was excited. End plot. Aw, nice and sweet ending. Double I think, positive. I think Tony Cade Bombaro writes amazing characters. Very relatable. Very good for, I think, uh, you know, high school era students or even older. I think a lot of younger people can identify with the problems, characters, and setting that Tony Cade Bambara puts out there. 100% agree. I totally think that you could go as young as middle schoolers that would enjoy this story and be able to relate to these characters. And I can totally relate to how Squeaky just idolized her father. Like, oh, I'm so fast. When we all know that, particularly depending on how old you are, you know, parents are going to be faster, in-shape parents, right? And she's like, nobody's faster than me except for my father. And that's how it is with my son, right? I'm a perfect <laughs> human being to my son. But I'm not. I, I am so far from perfect. But it's all about that that family honor, right? And the way she sticks up for Raymond and stuff. I, I would argue that she has kind of a code of honor with her family. Yeah, my dad can beat up your dad. You're always proud of your parents. Most of the time you usually are. And we see this with Squeaky of, of not only being proud of her dad, but of her brother too in a regard. And that grows through the story. 
So in the context of the hero's journey, maybe our main character, Squeaky, has a little bit of a blind spot, some type of a flaw. Like maybe it's hubris. Maybe she's a little too confident in her running. Maybe a little bit too about herself as opposed to taking care of her family. She still cares for them, but she could be better, right? And that's how Tony Cade Bombara has written Squeaky, to be kind of the knight who has this code of honor with the family. And her quest is to be better, to get rid of this hubris, this blind spot is what I would say. I would also say that not only does she have, you know, overconfidence in her father and her family, but she also has a little bit of a negativity towards her brother. She loves him and she will fight for him viciously, but she also is kind of mean to him in her own way, even though she does love him in the reference to how others treat him. Right. We see the way that she she protects her brother and he's allowed to tag along, but as long as he doesn't interrupt her training, right? Because we do see that she is hardworking. She is a relatable character. It's a character that we like and want to see succeed. And we see some flaws for her to improve and overcome. And we can kind of see some of the foils in this story. A foil is a character that provides like the opposite characteristic, right? Where we have Cynthia. Now, Cynthia puts on the presentation, the reputation that she's so smart. She can pass these tests without even studying and goes out of her way to let everybody know that she's not trying hard. But we know, Squeaky knows, that she is trying hard in the same way that Squeaky tries hard, but she doesn't hide it, right? I think this comes back to what you said at the very beginning is this story is so relatable because we could all picture ourselves in school of that one student that, oh, I didn't study yet, you know, and I got nine out of 10, you know, I I didn't even study Mm -hmm. last night. And you know that they spent an hour studying everything. And I was like, I spent four hours studying for the spelling test and I only got Mm -hmm. eight out of 10 right. And like, I don't know why the people try to do that. It's that, you know, trying to compensate for feeling their own inadequacies. You know, and speaking of inadequacies, one of Squeaky's is losing any type of a race. She must win them all. So thus comes our call to arms, our call to this race to perform, to step out into foreign lands and and become the hero, basically, is what she thinks her goal is going to be, right? It's this Mayday race. And her villain is going to be Gretchen. And it's kind of interesting. It reminds me a little bit like when she came to meet Gretchen in the street with Rosie and Mary Louise. Kind of reminds me of like the three-headed Hydra, if you will, from old Greek tales where uh, you cut them down, but they kind of keep coming back in a sense. And it kind of shows uh, limitations in your character. I love how Bambara writes her as this strong female, that she's even going to stand up for her parents because she wants to be who she is. And she doesn't want to dance. She doesn't want to wear a dress. She wants to, to be her own person. She doesn't want to be the strawberry. She is this poor black girl and she's proud of who she is and doesn't want to have to be something she's not. It kind of raises that question of what's your role and what's your reputation, right? She has this role in her family that she needs to step into, but she doesn't realize it. But she also has this reputation to step into of I have to protect that I am the fastest runner in this community. But does that make her happy? Is that something that she wants to? to do and by the end of the story realize that that's not the only thing that she has to do to be happy she can also help her brother and gain just as much enjoyment out of that because she didn't even realize that she won the race but she's like i'm gonna help my brother and that'll give me just as much as contentment right i mean at this point she's kind of maybe questionably failing to engage to protect the brother there's maybe even a little bit of hesitation she's still finding out what is her true calling because she doesn't realize that's what it is And I think this speaks a lot to the pressures a lot of young students, young children are put upon them. As you get older, more responsibilities are put onto you. You are offered more quests and you are the one that has to push through. You're the one that has to figure out the solution. And I think that's what makes Squeaky so identifiable. Well, that's part of the hero's journey, right, is self-discovery. And she's discovering the next tackle in her life the next thing that she needs to accomplish to feel self-sufficient or to feel self-fulfilled right so we cross into the other realm the different world than ours and that's going to be the mayday race right and that's where mr pearson kind of does the faustian deal if of a well why don't you just give up and allow the other students to uh win and she's like well that's gonna go against my reputation but it wouldn't go against her role as the family caretaker right but she doesn't realize that yet so a lot of, to your point about characters discovering themselves, there's kind of this trick called the the hero's cave. You can think about it in Star Wars, how Luke Skywalker entered this 
cave and it was kind of trippy and you're not exactly sure what's going on. But you know when the hero came back out, that was a different hero, right? That's this race for Squeaky where she has all these responsibilities, you know, being laid upon her in that daydream. She's floating, and a lot of times floating in literature has to deal with responsibilities and carefree, and I think even in dream interpretation, that's the way floating uh, can be interpreted as well. She's having these dreams of being free of these responsibilities, being weightless, and she comes back and starts, starts the race. The gun goes off, and she takes off, and what does she see? What's her epiphany that she sees? She sees Raymond running. She sees Raymond's Run, the title of the story, the epiphany of our hero. She finishes the race, but it's no longer important to her. She's had her epiphany. Her goalpost has changed. It's no longer her reputation that she realizes that's in her code of honor. It's her family. Because we have that quote about running. And by the time he comes over, I'm jumping up and down so glad to see him, my brother Raymond, a great runner, in the family tradition. So again, a family tradition of running goes back to that code of honor, that idea that she needs to be the protector and the knight of her family. She's suddenly realizing what her calling is. I love, though, that you have this whole story about Squeaky, and then you realize that Raymond is really her um, muse for all of this. She, he's the inspiration for all of this, and he is making her a better person. And she always thought herself, I, I felt like she always thought herself as superior to him because she was faster and she was kind of mean to him about his, you know, mental status. And she's like, wow, I still have a lot I can learn from my brother. And it's a very sweet, tender moment that I think that any age, you know, can learn from. Yeah, and I think the way Bambara wrote that was really good because you kind of, in the beginning, the way she describes it, in terms of ableism, right, it's something that can be a little bit irritating is when people think they need to be fixed, right? If you have like a shorter leg, oh, your legs aren't the same. It's like, no, they're different, but that doesn't mean that they're inferior, right? And the, and Squeaky des- describes her brother as not quite right in the head, which is slang, and I get I get the term, but it's also that ableism comment of, Squeaky thinks her brother needs to be fixed, right? And by the end, she realizes that she wants to work with her brother to mold her brother to be the next in the tradition. Maybe he's going to do it differently, but he's going to do it his own way. And I think I think I can relate to Bumbaras the way that Bambara puts Squeaky's growth into the story. And I love how we can kind of take the two ideas, right, of the physical effect and the mental effect. And, and a lot of times we always try to fix the physical, right? You get glasses or you get something to help you hear or you get, you know, something to help your physical aspect. And then she's like, well, he's just, he's, he's mentally this way. It doesn't matter. And when he finally was able to prove himself physically worthy, then she felt like, oh, I, 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 okay, yeah, he, he is the same as the rest of us in our family. And I, I love that that has kind of incorporated those two aspects that you just have to look past that and you have to look at the whole person, not just a part of the person. He's the next knight to take up the code of honor in Squeaky's family. And I thought it was really cute. It was a very sweet story that I thought. So we'll leave a Tony Cade Bambara playlist down below. We just did the lesson and I got a few more planned for us up ahead. I think she's an amazing writer. Let's go into our subjective review, which should have no impact from an objective quality perspective. Just how'd this story hit us, Crypto? I'm going to give this one an awesome nine. I love this story. I think so many of the characters are relatable on so many different levels. I love that it is a very short story. There's so much crammed in here for character development. Uh, I think it has a good lesson about, you know, everything of life and family dynamics. And you have to accept yourself before you can accept others. And then when you accept others, you can accept yourself. And I, I like that how Bambara has given this a strong female character, which mm. is sometimes lacking in the education system. When you sit down to read, it's always going to be the, you know, young bumpkin in the town village that the, the wizard comes over and says, come on, we're going to go here and save the world. And, mm-hmm. you know, you have Squeaky. And I, I, I just, I loved her character. She was fantastic. So yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome story. Solid nine. Great representation in a story. Great way to represent the hero in a very identifiable and relatable story. 
We go with an easy nine out of 10, highly recommended. If you are looking at some hero's journey type stories, consider checking this one out. Now, with that said, guys, we post videos every Monday and Thursday. We'd love to have you along in the journey. Hit that subscribe button to join us. Una out. Peace.